Good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk to Prof. Joel Mkhwati from the Department of Religion Studies. Welcome, Prof. Thank you. Uh, Prof, can you tell us how did you become a researcher? Well, uh, it's a long journey uh, to become a researcher, but uh, mine was inspired by my grandmother. So uh, I grew up within a Catholic family, and apparently my grandmother happened to be a traditional healer, what is commonly known as a Sangoma. So um, after high school, I saw the dichotomy that existed between the practical experiences of being secluded from church because of this traditional calling. Uh, she decided to join a Zionist movement where she was actually accommodated, uh, which is was not in her, I would say, inclination, but uh, there was something that was happening at the time because the church, the Roman Catholic Church, could not accommodate traditional healers and sanctimers within the system. And I remember reading an article that was published by the South African Catholic Bishops in 2006 where they actually put forward a statement that actually uh, was, was against, you know, people who were actually traditional healers and sanctimers within the church and practicing that. So, this sort of for me felt like it's something to actually explore. And when I finished my PhD, I thought uh, this is a subject that I would try to pursue and, and look deeper into it and find out why do we have these dichotomies between the African traditional religion and Christianity, whereas some people assume or maybe refer to themselves as African Christians. So what is the distinction? What, what comes first? Is it Christianity that comes first as a religion or is it one's identity as an African that comes first? So that was the primary reason that I actually fell into and fell in love with this kind of research. Wow, thank you, Prof. And then, Prof, what are you currently working on? Uh, I have a research project that is being funded by uh, the National Research Foundation under the Tutuka Grant. Uh, it's titled African Christianity, Intersections Between Christianity, Culture and Identity. So it started in 2021 and then it ends this year. So the research actually looks at the issues of identity and the dichotomy that I'm actually talking about. It's like, uh, what makes one an African? Is it possible to be an African and be Christian at the same time? Or does one, by becoming a Christian, nullify the existence of a cultural identity and background? Do we have an interaction between the two, Christianity and the African culture? So that is primarily where I'm researching. And it's very interesting because it speaks to the issues of Africanization. You might include subjects like as decoloniality. And it talks about issues of identity. And in some cases, dual identities. Is there any concept such as dual identities? Because some people believe that to be African is an identity on its own. And Christianity as a system itself is an identity and a way of life. So the two coming together simply suggests that it's a paradox, things that cannot mix together. But yet we have nominal Christians, the people who synthesize Christianity and African tradition all together. And they say these are two systems of faith and belief and they are very well in, in, in cahoots. They can be practiced together. So that's what I'm busy with. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. And then, Prof, looking at religion, how does it affect the society? Well, uh, religion is a very sensitive 
and very specific subject to talk about. Because um, if you look within the South African context, we can say religion is a paradox. In the sense that religion is a unifying factor within the society, but it can also be used as a tool to subjugate other people. If you look at the instances of the apartheid in South Africa, so the apartheid was motivated by religion, and there was what they called the state theology based on the biblical principles of God ordaining rulership. But at the same time, there was a resistant movement uh, that actually published the Kairos document, which was uh, at the time a, a response, a contextual response to what was happening within the context of apartheid. So we find that religion can be a, a, a very important tool in uniting the society and at the same time it can be a dangerous tool depending on how it is used. So it is important to be sensitive on the operations and how we define religion in any particular context. And uh, we know besides just the South African context that we have had incidences where people, uh, especially in terms of fundamentalism, people being killed in the name of religion or maybe using the name of God. But we also know that we have a philanthropic, I mean, a, a agencies and organizations that are helping people in the name of God. So religion can be a paradox and it should be used in a way that will benefit the society more than and the destructive ways. Thank you so much, Prof. And then, Prof, are there any exciting gaps within your field of study? Yes. Um, because my research primarily focuses on African Christianity, which is the intersections between Christianity and the African traditional religion. Uh, there has been many calls by African scholars to try to Africanize Christianity and some even perceive Christianity as a foreign religion and in so doing they have tended to take all African elements as a substance that may be used by Christianity just to find some form of context within the African heritage. The problem is that uh, I've not yet found any scholar that has extensively worked on the African heritage except the writings of John Beatty uh, on introduction to African religions. So what normally happens with the calls for Africanization, people would want to have an African flair within the Christian context, but there are no boundaries on how this should be dedicated. The only person that has specifically identified this gap is John Beatty, and then he specifically said that there are three facets to the African heritage. We have the historical heritage, where one seeks to trace their origins, how they came to be, what makes them human, and who is responsible for their existence. Those are questions of ultimacies. And the very fact that we are human beings seems to suggest that there might be a creator that gave rise or that is the originator of the universe or of creation. So Miti is addressing that and how that relates to African Christianity. And the second phase that speaks about the cultural heritage, saying that there are cultural undertakings that are just ordinarily cultural, that do not invoke any spiritual or any uh, ideas of ultimacy. And those should not be taken as representative of the African religion. Uh, so we should have an element of dissecting what is African heritage and what can be included within the Christian context. And the last facet is the religious facet, and this is primarily ordered. And this is where we talk about God, uh, the deities, and we talk about the ancestors. 
we talk about kings, the rulership of kings, and uh, we talk about the role of traditional healers, or sangomas, as we say. And uh, within these categories, we find that the other sections, or of course, these operate in unity. But one would be able to identify some certain elements, whether historical, relating to questions of identity, or cultural, meaning that those relate to a ways of doing, or maybe religious, on how Africans relate to God, ancestors, and all that. And that whole framework that is provided by Mbiti seems to be lacking in scholars that are actually talking about the Africanization. Which face it are we focusing on when we are Africanizing or decolonizing? Are we referring to the religious, the cultural, or the historical? So that is a big gap that needs to be clarified by upcoming scholars and current African uh, theologians and scholars alike. Thank you, Prof. And then, Prof, with reference to your writing, is there any specific school of thought or perspective that influenced your writing? Yes. Um, phenomenology is one of the schools of thought that I subscribe to. Uh, and besides that, I would like and I advocate uh, for what we call uh, pragmatism. So what normally happens is that in phenomenology or pragmatism, we would like to hear the voices of the inside people rather than the outsiders. So in research, we often have two perspectives that are dominant. The first would be the ethic, which is an outside view, people commenting on experiences that they have never experienced before. And the second would be the emic view, that is the insider's perspective. That is a comment from people who are living the realities that people are researching. And in this case, in African Christianity, as you would see, much of the comments that we receive come from conservative Christians judging uh, people who are nominal Christians on the experiences that they have not yet gotten full experience of. And the opposite of that would be African rigorists who speak of the African traditional religion as a separate religion that should not in any case be mixed with Christianity because Christianity on its own is a foreign religion. So these two seem to oppose the nominal view that says both Christianity and African traditional religion can come together and be practiced. Hence, nowadays it is easy to find someone who is a Christian in the Sangoma at the same time, or if not a Sangoma, someone who is rooted in the African heritage. Thank you so much, Prof. And then, Prof, what message can you give to young aspiring researchers? Well, I would say uh, that the most important thing to be a, a researcher is to find something that you love. If you find something that you love, it's something that will be able to sustain you. It will not feel like a burden to you because every time you research, you do research on it, it adds on what you would like to discover on what you are because research is an extension of you who you are and what you would like to share with the public so beginning with something that you love that gives you a drive to do that research in the first place would be the good uh, place to start thank you so much prof and then prof coming to technology what role can technology play in the field of religious studies? Well, uh, take this setting for an example. So this is already a good platform to publicize one's research and then we're using this to technology. So, and we cannot deny um, the existence and uh, I would say the significant role played by technology and then we know that we live in during the times of the fourth industrial revolution 
and technology has become part of our lives and we have experienced this uh, during the COVID times. Uh, I mean, like, uh, we moved things to online using technology. And this is very important because now, even when you want to disseminate your knowledge, whether it's in the form of articles that you publish, whether it's a book chapters or books, you rely on technology. And this must be available online so that people may be able to access these things. That is the value of technology. Of course, I'm just scratching here the surface. There is so much that technology can do. But I'm just saying that uh, we need the use of technology in all fields of research. Thank you so much, Prof. And then, apart from research, what are your other interests? Well, uh, I like sport a lot. Um, I am a dedicated fan of Mamelodi Sundays. So, <laughs> so um, I, I like watching football a lot. Uh, whether it's the PSL, it's the Premier League, so Serie A. So I, I like a lot of football and I do follow cricket as well and rugby. So those are the things that I would like to do and that I actually do when I have time to do them. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, okay, I'm a Pirates fan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Prof, uh, we really appreciate your time and then thank you so much for sharing with us and enlightening us about religion and the inter-faith that is taking place and then we are very fortunate to have you. Well, thank you so much. Thank it's my pleasure to be here and to have a certain like this. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you.